Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. Today we're going to be talking about something that was one of the biggest changes in how football is played in the last few decades. This thing is tactical periodization. It's a topic I bring up in each one of my analysis videos, but it's come to my attention that this term should be explained. So in this short video, we'll look at tactical periodization. But just before we get into it, I'd appreciate it if you like, subscribe and share the video. It helps small channels grow. This channel is a community for football lovers, so comment below, opinions, video suggestions, anything. Check out our previous tactical analysis videos in which tactical periodization is used. Now, let's get into it. Jose Mourinho is one of the greatest managers in football. Yes, recently his results may have deteriorated, however, in his prime he was a ruthless winning machine. The prime examples of this are his Porto team, who unexpectedly won the Champions League in 2004, as well as his Chelsea side of the mid-2000s. He's renowned for his attention to tactical detail, but the key element of his tactical preparation is tactical periodization. So what is this? Although the most well-known endorser of the concept is Jose Mourinho, it's important to note that he isn't necessarily the one who came up with it. The credit there instead goes to his mentor, Vito Frade, who gave Mourinho the foundations of this knowledge alongside Andre Villas-Boas. Tactical periodization focuses on a range of different concepts from psychological to physiological and more, but to keep things simple, we'll mainly approach it from a tactical point of view. So tactical periodization suggests that to produce a cohesive team which will increase their chance of being successful, seven factors have to be in agreement. These seven factors put together make up the game model, which is what you aim to do on game day. As an example, we use this game model on Barcelona. So let's look at it first under the club and country football culture, which is what is the general style of play for both. Clearly, possession football focused on passing football would fit both into the club, Barcelona, and the country culture, Spain. Club and structure aim. What do the club want to achieve? Barcelona clearly want to win trophies, and they've shown by using this style of possession football, they can still achieve good results and win numerous competitions, which therefore fulfills these aims. Player capabilities. As a squad, what style are they well suited to? In order to address this factor, Barcelona bring up players through the academy playing possession football, as well as acquiring players who are capable of playing this style. It wouldn't make sense for the current Barcelona team to play long balls and try win the second ball, as this doesn't play to their strengths. By primarily keeping the ball on the ground, they increase their chances of winning. In addition, they consistently appoint managers who can fulfill their possession philosophy such as Guardiola. It wouldn't make sense for them to appoint a counter-attacking coach or a more direct one. So this means the coach's ideas also fit into the game model. Now we move on to the more tactical elements of Mourinho's game model. First of all is the structural organization. This is simply the default formation for the team. You've probably noticed that most possession-oriented sides use the 4-3-3, or a variation of it. For example, Barcelona, Ajax and City. This is because it naturally creates several diamonds around the field, allowing them to easily keep the ball. So the Barcelona formation fits in in this model. Now, let's move on to moments of the game. If you've watched our in-game analysis before, you've heard me talk about these, but let's expand on them a bit more. Decades ago, before coaches became more tactically savvy, they would send their teams out with only a rough guide of what to do, basically one phase of play. But as the years progressed, coaches began to use two phases of play, that is what to do in attack and in defense. This often meant that the team would have one formation in defense, for example the classic 4-4-2, but when attacking they would have a different one, for example a 2-3-3-2, as the fullbacks push up to join one defensive midfielder who holds, whilst the other wingers are joined by the midfielder who attacks. But now with the four moments of the game you can break it down even further, giving you the team's defensive organization, which is what they'll do when the opposition has the ball for a longer period of time and is stable in attack. For the example of Barcelona, they drop into a hybrid 4-4-2, leaving Suarez and Messi high. The team's offensive transition, this is what they do as soon as they get the ball. A counter-attacking team in this phase would throw several players forward, but Barcelona are slightly more controlled, usually choosing to retain the ball, now moving into a 4-3-3. Now that they have the ball, what is their offensive organization? This is what they do when they have the ball under control. For Barcelona, that would usually mean building up with a 3-4-2-1 as Busquets drops deep and the fullbacks push forward, whilst Coutinho and Messi tuck in. But as they move forward, their wingers stay central, allowing their fullbacks to move higher up the pitch. This formation looks more like a 2-3-4-1. And lastly, what do they do as soon as they lose the ball and go into defensive transition? Highly defensive teams would focus on getting players back as quickly as possible, but instead of moving backwards, the Barcelona response is to move forward in a high press. 
meaning the formation can often look like a pressing four and two safety players in midfield, making it a 4-2-4. From this example, you can see the importance of the four moments of the game, as players have to be aware of where they should be during each moment of the game. And finally, we have the last element of the game model, the principles of the game, which falls under moments of the game. So, a principle is basically what you want to achieve during a certain phase of the game. So for example, in the defensive transition for Barcelona, we agreed they would aim to press high. So a high press would be the main principles, but under that we also have some sub-principles. By pressing high, a sub-principle is to make the opponent play backwards, whilst getting your own team compact to make it easier to press. So, as you can see, for a successful football team to function, all seven of these have to be in agreement. Think of teams who aren't doing well at the moment. You'll notice that at least one of those seven is poorly aligned, making them suffer. Please note that tactical periodization goes way beyond just on the pitch tactics, but to keep the video relatively short, that's all we'll look at. If you enjoyed this video or feel like you learned anything, please subscribe, like and share the video. It really helps small channels grow. And remember, keep it simple.